we have arrived at the third talk for today in uh, track one. Um, 2024, Pushing Default Themes Forward by uh, Jessica Lischik. See, I nailed it. Um, is a front-end and WordPress developer at Grade. Uh, she's been doing that for 17 years, which ultimately led her to co-develop, co-lead uh, our default 2024 theme. Anybody have used that? There is people who use it. Wonderful. Um, Jessica will tell us all about how that journey is and all the wonderful things she learned from that. Welcome to the stage. Thank you. He actually took away my question. Damn it. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Just a quick overview of what Remkos just told you, in case you missed it or did not understand what he said, but he said it pretty well. So before I begin, I have to ask the same question again. Who, has, who here has experimented or even created a website with 2024 already? Raise your hand. Oh, quite a few. Awesome. And you're not alone with this. So the feedback has been amazing for TT4, as we also call it. And I have some quotes here from a couple of people who have shared online uh, what I think of it, that it's a match made in heaven. It is the best default theme ever. And it's a game changer. These are all like real comments from real people who have been trying out 2024. And uh, I'm so happy that all the hard work of the contributors um, resulted in this theme being loved by so many people. But before we dive into 2024 itself, I would like to uh, take you on a short trip down the memory lane and look at the previous default themes um, to help you understand like, how uh, or why 2024 came together as it is. So let's make it a bit fun. And you can guess the WordPress version which these default themes came with. Maybe you remember. Um, but yeah, let's get it started. Who remembers this one? Oh, just a few hands. A few single hands. Which WordPress version does anyone know? It's actually WordPress version 1, 1.0. Oh. And it's still downloadable from the WordPress repository. How about this one? How many remember this one? Yeah, a few more hands. We're getting there. And uh, the WordPress version from this was 1.5 to 2.9. So, and it's also available in the theme directory still. So you can still download it and still use it. 2010 was the first of the 20 family to uh, be created as a WordPress version. Who knows that one? No, a few more hands. And it, was, uh, it came with version 3.0. So uh, you may not notice a direct um, like rhythm in the version numbers yet, but this could come. 2011, how about that one? Oh, OK. We have a few more. Version 3.2. And this theme was the first one to have actually supported post formats, which had been added in uh, 3.1, in uh, WordPress version 3.1. And uh, yeah, 2012 has been around since WordPress version 3.5. 2013. 3.6. Yeah, it's a bit tedious, I know. But I want you to just quickly see all the default themes together in one row. Um, 2014 was with WordPress 3.8. And this was the WordPress version that uh, brought the new admin design, which is now 11 years old. 
and we still use it. But changes are coming. So 2015, yet another one, WordPress version 4.1. 2016, 4.4. 2017 was a bit different one than the previous ones. Uh, WordPress, WordPress version 4.7. And this theme marked a different, uh, different way of themes being created, because 20, 2019 was shipped with WordPress 5.0, and we all know what else shipped with WordPress 5.0. It was the block editor, and this was the first theme that actually could work with uh, the block editor. Then we had 2020, uh, WordPress version 5.3. 2021, I also worked on this one. And we had 2022. And this was the first block theme, like the actual block theme as we know them today. Because previously, we were all like what we call now classic themes. 2023 was the first theme that uh, used community submissions as style variations. Because previously, all default themes were created beforehand by a designer. So we had this blank um, canvas, and we could add, uh, the community was asked to add their own style variations. But before we move on, I would like to ask you a question. What do all these themes have in common besides being a default theme? Does anyone know? Or? They, are they are amazing. That's that's one good point. But yes, <laughs> they all look like a block. And WordPress has been known as a block software, like ever since. But over the past two decades, it evolved into so much more than just being a block system or block software. And you can use WordPress today for any kind of websites. You're totally not limited. With all the features that got added over time, you can run just a corporate website. You can run an e-commerce system with it. You can do a membership site, whatever you need. And maybe something even totally specific uh, that does not cover any of the cases I just mentioned. And with the extensibility and the design versatility, uh, versatility with themes, you can build any website that is more than just a simple blog. But according to a study by WP Engine, at the end of 2021, the WordPress economy was estimated to have a financial value of $635.5 billion. That's a heck lot of money. And this includes all things like hosting providers, plugin and theme providers, infrastructure, and other technology vendors that uh, work with this. So there's a lot of money in this. And now here's the thing. You cannot tell me that this only comes from blogs. So sure, there's still a lot of blogs around. But WordPress would not have become the product it is today and be this successful if it would have been just blocks. So when you look at the 2020, fa 2020 family of the past, I think they did not reflect this versatility that much. Maybe 2017 and 2020 went into that direction um, to uh, go a, bit, a little bit more in this corporate website area. But that's it. And now here's the question. If WordPress is capable of being a software product that can be used for many different use cases, why did the default previous, previous default themes never really showcase that? And WordPress has already grown beyond being just a block software. 
So why are default themes also important? Um, they have been showcasing new functionality ever since, like I mentioned with um, 2011, with the post formats. And we're still bringing new features in every year into WordPress. So it's always a good um, thing to showcase that because WordPress is evolving so quickly. That one. Um, and as in for new users, it is their first experience. If, they, if you come, if you have a new user that has never been work, that, has, that has never worked with WordPress before, this is the first thing they interact with. And I think most advice, unfortunately, out there is to just go and say, "Yeah, install WordPress, and then you install theme X Y Z because it's so much better than the default theme," which is actually a shame to be honest. And um, I barely recommended anyone recommending a default theme to actually use it as a base to start working on a website. But, it's also, uh, but it also serves as a um, resource of best practices for developers. Um, for example, 2023, was really simple, and it didn't have uh, even didn't even have a functions PHP file, and because it's technically not needed anymore. Um, but with 2024, we did something else. We added a functions PHP file again, and showed how you can achieve some functionality within that PHP file. And there's no right or wrong how you create a theme. It showcases just what's best possible. And it also um, depends on like, the use case you have and the type of functionality need. And you can choose freely what you want to use or not use. Um, and the default themes give you an idea what is actually possible. So now we've looked at back at the previous default themes looked at WordPress in general and the importance of having a default theme. I hope it will be easier to understand now why, what my vision for 2024 was. I thought it was time to push the next default theme forward and showcase that it can be as versatile as the website that it needs to be built with. What are some common use cases? Uh, and how amazing how could amazing patterns look like? What could it look like having a default theme that just is as versatile? And can we create something that we give a, a wide variety of patterns and templates that users can mix and match? This was the overall idea behind this. So 2024 comes with three different use cases, mainly. We focus on these three. The business one on the left, the photographer slash artist one in the center, and the blog one on the right. So don't worry. We did not completely break the, ru the rules here. We added a blog template. So you can still do a blog, of course. That's not a problem at all. And we also brought back the sidebar on the block layout that has been missing for a couple of default themes before that. So it's now super easy. You want a blog? No problem. Want an artist's website? You can use 2024. Showcasing their work is super easy. Want to work, uh, create a corporate website? You have various patterns that are helping you achieving that. And it has been created as a playground to experiment. And the patterns are so versatile. You can mix and match them however you want. You can change them however you want. And because they're patterns, you can make them totally your own. And before I show you some examples of how 2024 is used, like real life examples, Let's take a look first at some functionality that might be hidden a bit more, um, but that is present with 2024. 
So let's see how that works. So first we have this replacing feature where you can swap out a complete page, a complete template. So you open up this uh, model, and then you get presented with the matching patterns we created. And you can simply click on one, and it completely replaces what has been there before. So it's never been easier to actually change the overall look uh, of a template this fast. Can we? OK. <laughs> Next thing is uh, the large variety of patterns, as I've already mentioned. There are a lot of patterns. And we've created them in a way that uh, these patterns are really giving you a suggestion how could things look like and being different from each other so that if you need a pricing pattern, you have that. If you need a newsletter sign up, you have that. If you need a gallery, you have that. So it's a very, um, very much different. We also added various footer patterns. So the bottom of your site or the end of your site uh, can be totally different, whatever use case you have. And there's even um, patterns, two patterns actually, that are pulled from the WordPress.org pattern directory. So these are not physically in the theme itself as a PHP file in the patterns directory but they are uh, pulled from WordPress.org directly. And this is also one of the things that showcases how this new functionality is actually working. And another thing that is interesting is the various block styles that we have added to give a more uh, yeah, design vari variety within the theme. And the most obvious one uh, is, this, is the headings one, where you have like the regular heading, which is just the heading. And then we have the one with the asterisk, which you're seeing highlighted here. And this one was particularly challenging to achieve. Um, we discussed it long, long, how we can actually make that happen, because with how can we create this with accessibility in mind? Because every default theme gets the accessibility ready tag. So this was one of the more challenging points to happen. I will talk about this in a minute. And I think I have not seen another theme using um, uh, block styles before at the heading block. So personally, for me, this was a new, completely new thing to see. And then we have, as I mentioned, the very lightweight functions PHP file. So this doesn't sound like a brand new feature. It has been around forever. Um, but you don't need it anymore. But you can use it if you want to uh, achieve some things. And um, when I say, like, look at it at best practices, um, because it only has about 200 lines, it's very light. When I say best practices, or that it showcases it, uh, that it could be used as a best practice, never take it as you have to exactly do it like this. This is just an option how you can use the functions PHP file. But it registers some functionality in here with 2024. We have the block styles. We have a custom block style sheet for the button variation, how you can make that happen in case you need it for whatever reason. And we register some pattern categories. And yeah, that's really not that much. But it's so interesting to see how you can achieve different things with it. And. Accessibility was also a major point. As I said, it gets the accessibility ready tag. And the great thing is that 
um, the input for accessibility already came very early in the development. So very early we were getting feedback, hey, these colors don't match, this doesn't work with screen readers, and a variety of uh, things that popped up during development. And we were able to solve them in time. Um, but as I said, it's everything, uh, and we can look at it very proudly that we have achieved this. And yeah, the color contrasts were a thing that has been checked multiple times because sometimes uh, some things also change during development. And the heading asterisk box style was particularly the one, as I mentioned, um, that we have uh, added via CSS, actually. And if you try to use a empty heading block just to display the icon, I have to disappoint you. It doesn't work. Because we made it happen that this icon will only show up if you actually use characters in the heading uh, itself. So you cannot use the icon with an empty heading. This is for accessibility reasons, actually. And we also wanted to make sure that the heading structure in the page templates is in the right order, so that the headlines or the headings are uh, uh, H1, H2, H3, and not mixed uh, all over the place. And yeah, that was a very, I've learned a lot during this uh, development myself also. So now that I've shown you a bit the history, that I've shown you a bit the, uh, what is in 2024 actually, I want to show you some real websites that have been created with 2024. And maybe you will see some similarity to the design you have in your head when it comes, when someone asks you what 2024 looks like. But these have changed quite a bit. So let's take a look. So this is the uh, repository, a WordPress newsletter. And I think it was one of the first websites that actually migrated right after um, 6.4 was released. Who here thinks that it looks kind of still like 2024 a bit? Or maybe not? No hands? OK. Looks a bit different, you say. Great. The next one is the Met Report. I think this is a bit more recognizable as 2024 because of the overall setup with the header and especially the, um, uh, the pattern where it says, listen. This is one of the patterns we had. And it just, Matt, who created his website, changed the, um, the image, of course, but also the text. But it still can be recognized as being created with 2024. And um, Matt, who did this uh, website, he also has several YouTube videos, which are super interesting, where he is uh, working with 2024 and looking at it as someone who has never worked with it before. That's super interesting to see. This is also 2024. Totally doesn't look like it, but um, it's still 2024 under the hood. So you're totally not limited to design that is provided. And this is a great example of how differently a website can look like when you have uh, the creativity in mind to make it your own. This is also 2024. This is Amber Hines' website. She's also a speaker here uh, at the WordCamp. And Amber also um, wrote down how she recreated her old website um, with using 2024. And the interesting here, thing here is um, she was looking at it from an accessibility point of view. So her blog post is all about how can I, as a non-developer, 
recreate my previous website with 2024 and accessibility in mind. Um, super interesting to read, and I think she eliminated about 95% of accessibility errors on her website just by using this and slightly adjusting the colors, I think. So that's definitely a wonderful achievement. And of course, I also used 2024 on my own website. And compared to the previous examples, I kept mine very simple, just changing uh, the colors and uh, the fonts and some patterns. And I hope these examples give you, gave you some inspiration for your next project and what you can actually do with 2024. And I'm proud of what all the contributors have achieved in a short time, the very short time of developing this theme. And we have created a solid default theme that you can and should make your own. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have time for some questions. The microphones are to my left and to my right, or left, right. I, um, I mix those up. Hey there. Hey. Thank you for your, your talk. Thank you. Uh, I want to um, give you some perspective from, uh, from, from a tech blogger, you know, that, uh, that does that for, for passion. Mm -hmm. I always like the idea of default themes, and you agree when you say that um, it should be a standard approach, right? Everyone should be should say, "Okay, I want that uh, um, that theme." What I have noticed in the last years is that uh, what I was saying from there is uh, it's basic because the more you go, the more you see that the last few years the the themes that are really basic as a design. Not, it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Don't take it as a bad thing. I'm, I'm saying the design. So you see, for example, it doesn't have so much, you know, uh, thing. It, it's good for every side. So it just, uh, there is not so ma many buttons, many uh, round, many specific, um, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if my, my, my point is, is, un is understandable. I hope yes. But th the, the thing is actually, it's, uh, it's really standard. It should be like a bit more, you know, understandable that I use it. Uh, I found another um, block theme that have exactly that. Uh, I'm not connected with that. It's a free thing. I'm not going to, to tell the name here because I don't want to say, mm -hmm. we said that at the, at the time. But uh, I, I really hope for the next year to see a bit more, um, how can I say, a, a bit more, um, worked on. I'm not sure. My, my I think I get your point. Um, and last yes. but not least, I wanted to say that. Um, no, that's no, no. Thank you so much for your for your time. Sorry if I. <laughs> spoke no, it's right. okay. I was thinking with that. In the meantime, I was saying sorry. No, okay. I I think I know what you what you want to say. So yes, the design is fairly simple. I totally get that. The thing is, we only had two and a half weeks to design it, or the designer had only two and a half weeks. So it's, I think, but for the time she had, she did an amazing job. But I totally get your point that a theme could also be more advanced in design, have more, uh, more have a more bold design. And um, we have, or Rich has been uh, collecting, Rich Tabor has been collecting ideas yesterday at Contributor Day. And there is an official mood board for 2025 for the next D4 theme. So you can bring in any inspiration that you have to uh, the next D4 theme and tell people like, hey, this would be a very nice thing to uh, actually think about in the next D4 theme. Can we make it a more bold design? That's totally possible. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't see anybody at the, yeah, there is. Hello. Hi. Um, 
in the in the recent years, with all of those new possibilities appearing, how to customize the, the themes, to me, um, the, the question more and more arises: how much the whole concept of a theme itself continues to make sense? If like like you just wonderfully showed, with just one theme, you can already create so many different styles. So, uh, does do WordPress does WordPress even still need themes like that, this bundle mm -hmm. thing, or should it just be an empty canvas, which you then just use patterns and all these kind of pieces to create what you need? I just was wondering what your thoughts on, are on this. Um, that's a very good question. Thank you. I think that we should still have different themes because you cannot put everything into one thing. You cannot put a super um, light website together with a very fancy designed website. You could. Technically, you could. But the question is, how can you um, make it easier for users? So if you overwhelm them with too many options, they will not use it. If you give them the opportunity to only use like a photography theme or only use a magazine theme, that's easier to customize and easier to like grasp what you can actually do with it, that they have a specific use case. And I think that's where it should focus, because then at the end of the day, you will get in hundreds and thousands of patterns. The question is, is that useful for the user? I don't think so because it would be too many options for the user to choose from. So that we have different themes we can like um, condense down in this specific use case. If you have a photography blog where you show your photos, you do not need like a pricing page, for example, or pricing pattern in theory. You would need, not need two. So I think it's still a good idea to have uh, different things going on as a, within a theme. You can make it a theme like 2024. You can do a, a corporate website and a photography website, of course. But if you would only have one theme and would try to um, put everything into this, I think it would be too overwhelming for the user. Thank you. Yeah, next question. Yes, hello, my name is Stefan from Switzerland. Hi. And hi, I appreciate very much your work. Thank you. And I have a little bit of experience that uh, uh, the websites are getting very fast responsive mm -hmm. for the smartphone, and everybody is using a smartphone if you're sitting in a bath, in a train, and so on. But I don't see a theme which really put in the functions for communication, for making photos or something like what, uh, with WordPress. And I would know if you think about to make a theme which integrate more functions of smartphones today. Thank you. Thank you. That's an interesting question. I think this slightly overlaps with functionality that a theme cannot cover. Because the most functionality that how a theme works is actually done in the Gutenberg plugin. So it's in WordPress itself. A block theme today is only a configuration file. Don't want to say it, but it's actually like it is. It's only a configuration file of how, what colors do you use, what fonts do you use, what are the spacings, how does a heading look like, how does I don't know, a quote block look like, whatever. You can all configure this in a theme, in, in the theme itself. But um, what you're talking about is, I guess, a bit more functionality, specifically for mobile. And this functionality cannot be covered by a theme. It has to be in WordPress itself. OK. Thank you. Bernard? Um. Was there something in the process of creating 2024 you would like to have in core already? Or is there something you're looking forward to being available for 2025? So some of the features would say, ah, if I would only have this, it would be so much more amazing. 
hover styles. Oh, yeah, hover styles, that's a good one. Who else wants hover styles? Cool. Yeah, that would be great because that was a point we were reaching during the whole process. Like the designer, Bea, she uh, created a design that was beautiful and different uh, hover styles for the buttons. And then we have to say, sorry, but WordPress cannot do hover styles. Mm. And that would be really great to see in 6.7. Thank you. Yeah, go. Hey, Jessica, this Hi. was uh, really great, so um, awesome job today. Thank uh, you. My, uh, my question is about the next default theme. Is there like one thing or one vibe in particular that you would like to see in the upcoming default theme? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I have an answer to this. Otherwise, it should be great. You could design it, maybe. No, um, I think some... Well, we have an early question here with being a bit more bold and a bit more, um, because 2024 had this calm vibe. And I think if we create something that is, has a bit more yeah, boldness to it, I think that would be a cool thing to do. Yeah, sounds good, thanks. Awesome. All right, thank you so much. Jessica, oh. one more, thank you. Thank you.